Hey everybody, I uh, just wanted to um, provide this Excel file to you guys and let you have the opportunity to play with it. This is the Lock of Volterra model of predator-prey um, relationships. And uh, so it's already built for you um, and you can sort of play around with the, the various controlling factors to see what happens to the population. And I'm going to try to uh, come up with some questions to ask you to try to uh, get you thinking about these, this model um, a little bit as well. But you must remember that uh, when you're thinking about this model that the two uh, predators and prey population numbers depend on one another. And so you see this cyclical um, nature where there are these peaks and valleys. And you'll notice that the, the um, prey species is always a little bit ahead of the predator species. So the, pred the prey species may be increasing while um, the predator species is still decreasing, then um, after some period of time, it's about a quarter of the amplitude starts to catch up to it and, um, and then um, cycles back through. You also notice here that um, in these models, there is no uh, stochasticity, um, but that can be included. You can also include um, carrying capacity for the, um, pre the prey uh, species. Um, those, of course, get more complicated, and we're going to not deal with those for right now. Um, but just to get you sort of started, uh, if you you can see these different values. So the prey R is the um, population growth rate. The predator M is the um, mortality rate of the predators. So it's sort of the inverse of the um, population growth rate, um, or the, the opposite of, you can think of it that way. N is, of course, our population of the prey species. P is the population of the predator species. Alpha is the capture efficiency, so how efficient the uh, predators are at actually capturing prey, so in other words, removing some of the prey items. And then beta is the um, conversion efficiency for the predator, so in other words, how effective they are at converting um, their food source into um, new offspring. And so you can imagine that if they're really high, have a really high conversion efficiency, it doesn't take as many of the prey species to uh, maintain their population at a level or, or um, cause it to increase. So let's take a look if we change a few of these values. So let's start with just our population number. So you can see it's currently at 30. If I cut that in half to 15, you can see that there's uh, a change. Okay, so the population cycles between um, between these these values of about 20 or a little less than 30 down to about 10 or a little less, maybe nine. And then um, let's put that back at 30 and let's change the um, prey species and let's change the prey species. We'll cut it in half also, 2.5, and we can see what happens that the um, the, the prey species actually increases uh, with a reduction in the predator population. Um, but the, so the cycles, uh, the peaks and valleys get much deeper in that instance. Let's put that back at five also. Now let's check, try, um, I'm not gonna increase, I'm not gonna double the population for the, the prey species, but instead I'm gonna uh, add 50% to it. So if we say 45, and you can see again, we get these changes where you have high, higher peaks and valleys. Um, if we then, um, let's add, let's put that back to 30. And then let's change this, um, the predator to, um, we'll say eight, because we can't do 7.5 effectively. And you can see again, um, some changes sort of shrinks the, um, the prey um, species a little bit. Let's put that back to five and 30. We're gonna now uh, put the prey species all the way up to 60. I want you to see what happens. You can see that um, the prey species increases so drastically and then um, and, and it doesn't really show the backlog here but um, so much so that eventually the the predator um, population is high enough that it causes the two populations to effectively crash uh, there are some problems with the model that um, we're not going to get into i think your book addresses them a little bit um, all right so now that let's set this back to our normal values our starting values 30 and 5. let's change the um, the population growth rate from 0.8 to 0.6, and let's see what happens. You can see some change there. Let's reduce it even further to 0.4. Again, some changes in the, in the predator mortality. Let's put this back at 0.8, and then let's change the predator mortality to, um, let's change that to 0.2, so really high or low predator mortality. 
And um, again, this causes a um, the copy of the, the model. Um, so let me remember what we have five. Okay. And then uh, if we change the prey growth rate to, let's say, half of, of 0.8, you can see we have some changes here. If we do 0.2, it's really, we start seeing these really weird cycles um, as well. So um, 0.8, go back to its normal. And then if we look at the conversion uh, or capture efficiency and conversion efficiency, we'll double the capture efficiency, and you can see that we get some changes. I'm going to double it again. You can see the model starts to fall apart a little bit. Um, let's put it back to its normal value. And then let's look at the conversion efficiency. So let's say we um, can change the conversion efficiency to half. You can see that it uh, actually re required the, the population of um, – Predator doesn't doesn't increase as much, doesn't as high, and it allows the population of prey species to be a good bit higher. Um, so that's the Lotka Volterra model. You can play around with what all is going on inside um, inside these cells if you like. But effectively, this is the, um, the part of the the model that you add to the the original population. So uh, it's the rate minus the capture efficiency of the predator times the uh, predator population at any given time t, and then it is exponentiated, and exponentiated just is just the um, equals exp, and they're exponentiating this value, and so you can see that in here. And exponentiating just basically means that you use the, um, the Mueller's uh, number, that e, which is 2.718, I think, or something along those lines, and um, it allows you to, uh, it's basically E raised to this value. So that's, um, that's exponentiate. And then you can see here that they rounded, uh, the, the model here has rounded the original population times um, the, um, the um, E7, which is our exponentiated component here. And it's just telling it to round it to zero values. And it does that, it's just um, all the way down. And then for the predator model, we have a, um, the, the component here that, that changes the, the uh, end value is the mortality, predator mortality rate, a negative value, plus the predator um, conversion efficiency times the capture efficiency times the population of the prey species that is then exponentiated as we went through a minute ago. And then again, it is this original prey population uh, rounded or, or times the exponentiated component here um, rounded to zero. And then it's just dragged down. So that's the model. Um, and I'll come up with some questions to ask you guys, get you thinking about this a little more. Um, I think this is a pretty neat example. It sort of gets at that classic uh, lynx hair um, predator pre prey population cycles that, that uh, so many folks know about. And um, that's it. We'll look forward to seeing you guys again soon.